tonight. America's wild about Tiger King, the Netflix docuseries that exposed the crazy world of big cats. So many questions, but not enough answers. Joe was presented with the opportunity from a pair of snitches. Did Joe Exotic really order a hit on Carol Baskin, or was he framed? He paid me money to go murder that lady, and that's the, that's the end of it. Did Carol kill her husband? I'm extremely suspicious, but not just of her, of this whole circle here. Extremely suspicious. People want to believe something ridiculous. They will believe it no matter what the facts are. The last day that I saw him, he was pretty adamant that he was going to get a divorce and he was going to go to Costa Rica. The docuseries that riveted America. He called her bitch so much, I thought it was her last name. You are about to watch never-before-seen video. Here, new interviews. We have exclusive information about new federal investigations. I'm gonna shoot you right between the eyes. TMZ investigates Tiger King, what really went down. Good evening, I'm Harvey Levin. The numbers are eye-popping. More than 34 million people watch Tiger King and the antics of Joe Exotic on Netflix. It's a national obsession. If you're like most people, you have an opinion about who allegedly murdered or tried to murder who. When this hour ends, we may change your mind as we investigate what really went down at the zoo. The biggest celebrity to emerge from quarantine is a convicted criminal, a man who killed endangered species. A man also convicted of trying to put a hit out on his arch nemesis, Carol Baskin, an animal rights activist and founder of the Big Cat Rescue Sanctuary in Tampa. I thought the man was a joke about because he said in front of the, actually the whole park, you know what I'm saying, all the employees, several times, you know, I got to get rid of that Joe Exotic, government named Joseph Maldonado Passage, now sits in federal prison where he could end up spending the rest of his life. To this day, he makes no bones about it. He says he was framed. Here's what's crazy. Carol herself is fending off public suspicion. She murdered her husband, Don Lewis, who just disappeared back in 1997. We'll have much more on that in a bit, but first things first. Ow, son of a bitch! Joe Exotic, who once had more than 175 tigers and a menagerie of other animals at his private zoo in Oklahoma, was convicted last year of conspiracy to commit murder for hire, as well as crimes involving animals. The jury came back at lightning speed, and when it was over, 57-year-old Joe was sentenced to 22 years in prison, pretty much a life sentence. It seems open and shut, but... There are a lot of lingering questions. For starters, did Joe pay former handyman Alan Glover $3,000 to kill Carol, or was it for something else? It was like an everyday occurrence to him that he was saying about murder and not waiting. Alan Glover, who has not spoken since the Netflix docuseries dropped, says it's crystal clear Joe gave him the loot to have Carol murdered. He just wanted her dead, so he didn't have to fork out a million dollars. Joe admitted during the trial he did indeed pay Alan three grand, but he claims it was not to kill Carol, it was to get Alan out of the zoo. He paid me money to go murder that lady, and that's the, that's the end of it. There's nothing else to it. So why did he take the cash? I just wanted to pay him back for a little bit of the that he caused all the harm and the misery that he gave to everybody here at this park and the animals, period. That was a very small thing I did, very small. I wish I could have done more to him. I do. But Alan had his own issues. He's been in and out of jail, not exactly a perfect witness. Joe says he was a bold-faced liar. Yes, he was rude, he was gruff, he was very dislikable, but he took the stand. 
He was subjected to cross-examination and the jury believed him. Former prosecutor and TV host Nancy Grace says the real smoking gun, the undercover sting where Joe made a deal with an FBI agent posing as a hitman. They didn't have to believe a witness. They could hear Joe Exotic themselves. They heard other surreptitiously recorded tapes where the hitman was talking about where are we going to get the money? Ask the jury. They heard the evidence. They didn't just watch a Netflix documentary. They heard the real deal. They heard tape recordings of Joe Exotic himself sitting with an FBI agent plotting the murder of Carol Baskin. Joe and Carol were at each other's throats for years, but tensions really boiled over in 2013 when Carol won a million dollar judgment against Joe for jacking her logo. Joe was forced into bankruptcy. James Gerritsen worked with Joe and helped set up the undercover sting. He says Joe would tell anyone who would listen he wanted Carol dead. He solicited her murder to a lot of different people, even a lot more people than that were involved in the whole case. I mean, he went to a lot of people and asked if they would, if he would, if they knew somebody that would kill Carol Baskin. But that raises yet another question. If Joe was serious, would he have told so many people he wanted to murder Carol? He was just so narcissistic. Jeff Lowe was Joe's zoo partner and with wife Lauren took over the facility. I think Joe thought that as long as he was here when it happened, he wouldn't be held responsible. And I've told him a hundred times. I said, Joe, if Carol ends up missing or dead or injured, who do you think they're going to come to? He thought, well, you know what, if I'm here, if I got an alibi. I can tell you the murder for hire plot, I mean, that, that sounds weak. Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister wasn't involved in the case against Joe, but he's investigating Don's disappearance. He's looked at the evidence against Joe and says it was thin. Listen, I think when people are irate and they're obsessed with somebody, they make a lot of comments. But for it to be a true murder for hire, you have to you have to take that overt action to try to carry it out. And I just don't think that was taken. I don't think there's enough there. And do I think he might have said something, alluded to it because he was obsessed with Carol? Yeah, but I tell you what, my percentages would be low. If you're asking me, hey, listen, what's your what's your personal opinion? I, I'd say in the 20, 30 percent that 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 he's guilty of this murder for hire plot. I think it's two individuals who saw it as an opportunity to put Joe away so they could take over his his zoo and not have to pay a penny for it. That's what I think is more accurate of what occurred here. I think that Joe was presented with the opportunity from a pair of snitches. Doc Antel, another private zoo owner featured prominently in Tiger King, says Joe got a raw deal because the two guys who set Joe up, Joe's zoo partner Jeff Lowe and Joe's longtime associate James Garretson, were dirty. Both guys that I believe have long trouble with uh, the federal authorities and all types of scams and incidents that they've been involved with over decades of time. We've spoken with numerous people who worked with Joe or knew him from the world of big cats. The person that I knew of Joe, he was a very good person. He was a very nice person. Felicia Frisco, who owns seven tigers herself and performs with them, says she knew Joe for years and he wasn't a killer. She didn't appear in Tiger King, but she spoke to us. The Joe I knew, I mean, I really did not think he would think hiring a $3,000 hitman or that would even cross his mind. That view is echoed by Matt Rayblick, who spent a lot of time at Joe's Zoo while he was producing a reality show pilot. The Joe exact that I know wasn't a killer, wasn't a murderer. But everyone agrees on one thing. Joe hated, hated Carol. Look, I'm in sunny Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Gonna stop and visit my best friend. <laughs> Bitch. Since his arrest, we've had people come into the park to pull us aside and say, Joe approached me. You know, I was here and I was a friend of Joe's. He approached me and he offered me $50,000 to kill Carol. It's, it seems like every in every realm of, of the community, Joe has reached out and tried to get somebody to do his deed for him. The feeling was mutual. 
Carol, along with her husband Howard, did everything they could to shut Joe down. So says producer JT Barnett, who was part of that TV pilot with Joe. I saw how Carol persecuted Joe, I mean, uh, to the level of, of, of Jesus. I mean, I, I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars a month in negative marketing against him. But Joe's hatred for Carol became an unbridled obsession. Joe, this outrageous character who seemed to kind of dissolve into, unfortunately, the title of the show, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness, seemed to wrap up our Joe Exotic and make him appear to just fall apart. The reality, it doesn't matter how awful Carol may have been to Joe, it doesn't justify a hit. Now, am I saying Carol Baskin is an angel? No, that's not what I'm saying. But no one deserves to die at the hands of a hitman. I don't care who the victim is, or what their reputation is, or what they've done wrong. It's not about her, it's about the hits. The conventional wisdom from the show is that Joe was paranoid. But as the saying goes, he may not have been paranoid. He really did have enemies. Joe's enemies are out after him. I'm, I'm not saying that there's an inside job or there was somebody kind of being a mole for Carol internally, but it's just very strange that all of a sudden, you know, from one step of we sold a TV show to the next step of immediately I'm getting mail from people. It seems like there was somebody on the inside letting Carol or, or other animal rights activist groups know that something was up. And then there were those claims of animal abuse. Get out! Go! Get! Joe was found guilty of killing tigers, but he claimed they were euthanized humanely. Animals get sick. Animals get bit by water moccasins. Animals, uh, you know, hurt each other. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, in a farm, you, you have to put animals down. And so I don't, and, and Joe did that as humanely as possible. Um, and, and I don't think that's something he tried, they tried to paint him as he just killed these tigers. And to be completely frank with you, these are just trumped up charges to make the murder for hire more concrete or just to make the, the judge and the, the jury, you know, hate him even more. But James Garretson, the man who set up that sting involving the Carol hit, saw things much differently. I would go one day and see, you know, cages full of animals. And then, you know, the next day I'd go, there'd be, you know, animals missing. And I know he was killing a lot of animals. It just really soured me to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore. When we come back, the burning question everyone is asking, did Carol kill her husband? I'm extremely suspicious of this whole circle here. Why the sheriff is reopening the investigation into who killed Don Lewis. And later, is the world of big cat ownership out of control? It's really just a, a horrible thing. And what's being done to protect these majestic animals from being exploited? More exclusive video, more exclusive details when Tiger King, <laughs> what really went down, returns. Joe Exotic is in prison, maybe for the rest of his life. Carol Baskin, the woman he was convicted of trying to murder, is still a fierce animal rights activist, but the docuseries Tiger King raised a question that has now become a reignited criminal investigation. What really happened to Carol's first husband? There's no doubt that he was killed. Don Lewis vanished in 1997. He's never been heard from since. His vehicle was found at a private airport in Florida, and Carol said she thought he might have just gone to live in Costa Rica, where he had a ranch, a mistress, and a second life. But Sheriff Chad Cronister isn't buying it. He had a girlfriend. He had a home down there. Uh, he was involved with some suspicious or shady business characters down there. But we, we checked all the passenger manifests, private and commercial, and he had never left the country. Uh, his passports, he had two of them. Neither one of them were flagged that he had ever left the country. Why is his van parked in the airport with his briefcase, his luggage, and his keys? There's no manifest that he left. So what does that tell me? It tells me he was murdered and someone thought to park his vehicle there. 
and it gets even more suspicious. I've been told things from a couple of people on the street. Um, I'm, I'm convinced he's dead. Joe Fritz was Don Lewis's lawyer. He says the will and power of attorney Don left behind is like none he's ever seen. A provision that says if Don disappeared, his entire estate would go to Carol Baskin. We have never seen a power of attorney say anything like in the case of my disappearance. That's terribly unusual and strange, and you'll never see that in a power of attorney. I've written wills. I've never seen a clause like that in my life. And I can guarantee you this, Jack Don Lewis didn't disappear. Jack Don Lewis is dead. Sheriff Cronister, who is now in charge of that new investigation into Don's disappearance, is baffled by the will. Harvey, you're, you're an attorney. Have you ever, ever heard of, a, 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 in probate, a will that has a clause in there, if I ever disappear, leave my wealth to this individual? I can answer that question, having been a lawyer for more than 40 years, the answer is no. And the plot thickens, because the person who claimed to have witnessed the signing of the will months before Don disappeared, well... We had uh, one of Carol's workers that came forward and said, hey, I was there when the signatures were signed on the will. Well, several years after that, she recanted her story and said that she felt compelled to make that statement, that that wasn't true. And there's more. He says, I'm serious, this is it. I am done with her. Ann McQueen was Don's office manager. She says there was trouble in Don's marriage, and the last time she saw him, he had had it. The last day that I saw him, he, he was pretty adamant that he was going to um, get a divorce and he was going to go to Costa Rica. He was pretty adamant about that because they had been fighting and arguing and I, they argued over over money i think there was at one point in time he accused her of stealing money it was either eight or nine thousand dollars and he said that he thought carol had taken it several people we spoke with say carol had indeed threatened don's life before i knew that there was issues in the marriage and between them issues indeed don had sought a restraining order swearing under oath Carol tried to do him in. Yes, there is a um, domestic violence injunction petition that I've seen uh, in which um, Don alleged that Carol threatened to kill him. The judge rejected the restraining order and Don's attorney thinks he knows why. You almost had to have more if you were a man seeking an injunction than if you were a woman seeking an injunction. And since there was no physical touch or physical harm, it would have been very difficult to get an injunction. Do I believe she made a threat? Yes, I do. Sheriff Cronister launched the new investigation into Don's disappearance because of the Tiger King docuseries. He says in the past, Carol has been less than cooperative. We offered for her to come in and take a polygraph test and she denied the request. Uh, she said her attorney said it wouldn't prohibit us from pursuing criminal charges later on. Carol Baskin declined our request for an interview, but she did post video saying there was no upside to a polygraph. I knew I didn't have anything to do with Don's disappearance. It wasn't going to help anybody find him. So there was absolutely no reason to take a polygraph then or now, 23 years later, when people are still accusing me of killing my husband. You just can't imagine how emotional, and I can feel myself getting worked up even saying this, how emotional that is to have people think something so horrific about me. Cronister says up to now he has no real suspects, no official persons of interest. But he acknowledges the first person you look at is the spouse, and then you look for motive. I think whenever you're looking at a disappearance or a homicide case, jealousy is probably number two close to number one. Number one always becomes about money. And then at times you throw crimes of passion, that emotion in there, uh, it becomes extremely combustible. And, and that's what you try to figure out. The sheriff has had a nagging question. Why wasn't Carol more concerned about finding her husband? There's people that believe why, if she was in love with him, that was her husband. Why didn't she offer a reward? Why didn't she do more to try to find out who's responsible for his disappearance or where he went? Sheriff Cronister has a plan. 
because whoever murdered Don, he doesn't believe acted alone. I'm extremely suspicious, but not just of her. I don't want to allude to the fact or insinuate that she's our person of interest and this is who we're focusing on. I'm not comfortable saying that yet. When we get there, I'll be sure to call you back. Listen, there's normally not one person that commits a homicide. It's always a couple people. And you know, this, this, had, this had to be extremely planned out. This had to be well thought out. There's someone else involved in this. There's someone who was paid to do it. There's someone who helped do it. I'm hoping that person wants to come and get this off their chest and, and, and help law enforcement do the right thing. And the sheriff wants to make one more thing clear. Immunity from prosecution is on the table. You start talking about different things with immunity. You know, deals are cut. And, and, and listen, every deal's on the table right now. Help us solve this case. As for Don's lawyer, well, he says he has his ear to the ground and he knows what happened to his client. When you start hearing something from the street, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. If you start hearing it from multiple sources, there's something to it. I believe that the sources are street people, and that's all I'm willing to say at this point. For Don's office manager, she still hasn't gotten over the reality that Don's gone. Don's family and I don't have anything. We, we, we just have a memory. And so, so yes, um, it is. It is sometimes very hard to. It's very hard to deal with sometimes. Enjoy. When we come back, are some of the key players from Tiger King still under investigation, as the show suggested? We found out just what authorities are looking at. Plus, big cats. Big problems, how Tiger King could change things dramatically for exotic pet owners and zoos. That's after this. Joe Exotic may be locked away for decades, and Carol Baskin may be feeling the heat from the new investigation into the death of her second husband. But there are other loose ends. Investigations into the transportation of tigers from breeders to roadside zoos across the U.S. Doc Antle, um, as far as I know, absolutely is under investigation. PETA lawyer Brittany Pete is playing her cards close to the vest. She says she knows exactly what's going down. All I can say is that Doc Antle is under investigation by multiple agencies. I have not heard that Jeff Lowe is under investigation, but he should be. Both Doc and Jeff say PETA is just blowing hot air. I'm not as cold-hearted as, as, as Netflix wants to, you to believe I am. My USDA inspection uh, record is spotless. It's immaculate, regardless of what Peter will try to tell TMZ. I've never had any trouble. I've never had any violation of the United States Department of Agricultural Animal Welfare Act. Our USDA inspectors know us. They know, you know, okay. most of it is, is baloney. Well, maybe not, because federal law enforcement sources tell TMZ the U.S. Department of Agriculture has indeed launched an investigation into the sale and transportation of endangered species, namely tigers. And our sources say Doc Antle and Jeff Lowe are both under the USDA's microscope. What's more, our sources say the USDA has sent its file over to the U.S. Department of Justice, where it's being reviewed. And we're told the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife is now investigating as well. Our sources say the DOJ only got interested after Tiger King was released. If they are looking now, and if they are taking this more seriously now, um, then I suspect it's it's because um, there's more attention on these issues now, um, now that Tiger King has come out. And, and I think that there's also more attention 
um, on their their complicity in these acts now that we've seen Joe going to prison, for example, for shooting tigers in the head and for trafficking. It's true. Our federal sources say the USDA looked at tiger trafficking years ago, but as one source put it, quote, there was never an appetite to take it to a higher level than the USDA until Tiger King came around. The docuseries revealed Doc Antle's zoo was recently raided, but we found out it was more about a recent raid on a zoo in Virginia, and state authorities were investigating lion cubs that ended up at Doc's zoo. This is a state, not a federal investigation. It was rather insane that they went that far, but we in nowhere connected to any wrongdoing. But from the day they came, they said, you are, you yourself are not being charged with any crime nor any wrongdoing. This is purely to fortify us with information for our case in Virginia. Doc wanted to make one thing clear, something that really ticked him off. At the end of Tiger King, they also make the ridiculous concept that the Tiger Cubs um, are euthanized. There's nothing further from the truth. It's illegal, it's immoral, it is absolutely an unethical idea that also has no purpose. Cubs are fabulous from the time they're small and they're incredible as big adults. Those big adult tigers have been working with me hand in hand for the last four decades. Big adult tigers work out with us and so do they at every stage of life. Every cub is precious and always kept for its entire life. And Doc has one more beef with the docuseries. A lot of people upset that they have said that I have a harem. Somewhere between 20 and uh, eight, nine, four wives at a time. I was married 25 years ago to the mother of my two youngest children. She died in a car crash. Since she died, I've never been married again. I certainly don't have multiple wives. I have no wives. I live in a house alone, and I am a guy that does have girlfriends, and I've got more than one at a time. And those girlfriends know that fact. And I have those women in my life. They know what's going on. And all of them are in their 40s and 50s. And there's this. Could an alliance have formed between PETA and, of all people, Joe Exotic? He wanted to try to ally himself with us. He even suggested that that he might someday be a spokesperson for PETA, speaking out against the, the cub petting industry and the roadside zoo industry. And he, he offered to share with me dirt that he had about, about others in the captive wildlife industry, and he did. Coming up, the fallout from Tiger King. Your few minutes of holding that baby tiger sentences them to a lifetime of cruelty from the moment that they're taken from their mother. When Tiger King, what really went down, rolls on. Tiger King was, as the title says, about mayhem and murder. But the show also pulled the covers off the world of roadside zoos and the treatment of tigers. It's really just a, a horrible thing. Evan Anton is a veterinarian who hosts the show Evan Goes Wild on Animal Planet. He's especially upset that these roadside zoos set baby tigers up for disaster. Cub petting, I'm not a big fan of it, but really the big tragedy is what happens after these cubs are not, you know, are too old to be pet because they're too dangerous. And they usually live, you know, lives being abused or in small enclosures, and they're often inbred and crossbred. I've actually worked with some of these characters in the past. Jeff Corwin, a wildlife biologist and executive producer of Alaska Animal Rescue on Nat Geo Wild, says unregulated roadside zoos put animals and people at great risk. When anyone is allowed to have one of these animals as a pet, not only is it often bad for the animal and in a horrible way for that creature, but it's also very dangerous for people. Case in point, this scene from Tiger King. A tiger tearing off the left arm of Joe Stapper's sap. You all right? Producer J.T. Barnett was right there with his camera. When he jerked his hand around, the, the cat 
swatted at it with its two two paws. Um, this actually removed, you know, the, the, everything from the elbow down pretty much. And when the cat actually saw the blood, he backed into the corner and cowered and, you know, and Saf fell down and every, everything happened pretty fast. One of the criticisms, tiger cubs are cute and cuddly, but when they grow up, they become dangerous, outlive their usefulness, and are either neglected or killed. All of our cubs, they grow up with us, they become big adults, and we still are able to maintain that relationship. But tiger owner Doc Antle calls BS on critics. There's a mistake there. Big cats don't grow up to be loving, kind, compassionate creatures, and that's absolute BS. It is nothing but that incredible love and understanding that can happen between a man and big cat. PETA lawyer Brittany Pete says, forget when tigers grow up. Roadside zoos that allow people to pet these cubs, well, it's just plain cruel. If there's one thing that people take away from Tiger King, it's, it's to remember that if you're ever tempted to pose with a baby tiger, please remember that your few minutes of holding that baby tiger sentences them to a lifetime of cruelty from the moment that they're taken from their mother un until the, the moment that, that they die. Jeff Lowe says there are plenty of situations where cubs just don't have an option. There's, and then there's a thousand times over your lifetime that, that a mother will reject that cub or the mother's milk dries up and the cub starts to starve. So you have to intervene and you take that cub. But we don't breed for cub petting um, like Peter would have you believe. We offer cub petting when we have cubs that are in our care. There's a raging debate in the tiger community, reignited by the docu-series. Are these magnificent creatures better off in the wild or captivity? Tigers deserve to be wild. They thrive as wild creatures. They face all the perils and threats and challenges that any wild animal would face. And yes, in some situations, there are a number of species that have a longer lifespan in um, a captive environment because they don't have the, the added natural stresses. But in my heart, and I think in the heart of anyone who really cares about tigers, with the exception of, of specific conservation or educational reasons, tigers should be in the wild where they're needed. You know, the world is low on tigers. I, I don't like seeing them captive um, or, or living in cages. But, you know, this is where we are. We can't, there is no wild for them anymore. They're being poached into extinction. Evan Anton concedes the wild does indeed pose problems. The reason that tigers have been doing poorly in the wild and that we've lost 95% of them in the last 100 years is because of habitat loss and intensive poaching. Tigers and cats in general are, are very well equipped to survive in the wild when, when they're born in the wild. But never is the rationale, we need to get all these animals out of the wild to get them in captivity because they, they're, they're, they can't survive in the wild. Anything that lives in the wild has evolved and been equipped to survive in the wild. I think zoos play an essential role in allowing people to make that personal connection. Without it, the zoos of the world would not have the opportunity to even step towards a conservation movement because people wouldn't fall in love with them like they do by seeing them. But PETA and other critics say, on balance, most roadside zoos do way more harm than good. In 2006, they went undercover at Joe's Zoo and shot this disturbing video of a man beating a tiger with the butt of a gun. Roadside zoos, especially like those featured in, in Tiger King, will see the animals pacing back and forth um, and, and that's a sign of extreme psychological distress. Um, and that's one of the reasons that PETA is fighting so hard um, to end the, the tiger cub petting business that's featured in Tiger King in these terrible roadside zoos across the country. Doc Antle says PETA paints everyone with the same brush and that's grossly unfair. If you could come visit, this is a five-star place. We are the Ritz Carlton of all wildlife facilities. Some conservationists say the series may not have done their cause any favors. So many people that have seen it are becoming fans of Joe Exotic and, uh, you know, uh, some of the places in this documentary where it's like, what? Why, why are we praising these people? These are, these, are not, these are not the good guys doing the right things for the animals.
Coming up. I mean, Lassie could figure this one out. He thinks he's so special that he believes he's above the law and can get away with this. So you've heard the facts. How do you come down? Most of the internet suspects that Carol did kill her husband. I felt like Joe Exotic was like the Scarface of cat people. Tiger King has become the obsession that binds us during quarantine. And there are two principal reasons, Carol and Joe. Clearly, this guy is exhibitionistic, he's narcissistic, he's self-promoting, uh, and he has zero impulse control. I think this guy would do anything for fame. Come here, my sexy tiger. Dr. Phil's assessment of Joe Exotic is not only dead on, for many, it's actually what makes Joe appealing. Like, what do you say? I'm a mullet, uh, I'm a mullet gun toting, drug addict, you know, uh, a homosexual or something, whatever he said. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> Blink 182's Travis Barker is all about Tiger King and Joe. I felt like Joe Exotic was, you know, out of cat people, he was like the scar face of cat people. Like, he literally had it all and was on top of the world and was, you know, making moves and and just kind of acted out of emotions and and lost it all kind of like the story of, of, of scarface it, it was really relatable the two best things in quarantine are tiktok and tiger king i think that's what's collectively getting all of us through this taylor lorenz is the trends technology and culture writer for the new york times Despite being terrible himself at social media, it's such a meme-worthy show. You have all of these characters that you would never encounter in daily life. As for whether Joe put a hit out on Carol, well, agree to disagree. I mean, Lassie could figure this one out. If you have malignant narcissism, you don't have the ability to weigh the consequences of your actions. He shot a mannequin or a, a doll in the head on camera. He called her bitch so much, I thought it was her last name. It's not hard for a jury to say he doesn't have the impulse control to restrain himself from this. He thinks he's so special that he believes he's above the law and can get away with this. I would agree with the jury's decision in finding him guilty. I mean, to me, it felt like he was just, you know, talking amongst people like, oh man, I wish I could, you know, I wish she was dead or I'd, I'd, like, I'd kill her myself. I don't ever really feel like he was going to kill her. As for what happened to Don, well, it seems most viewers have spoken. I think most of the internet suspects that Carol did kill her husband. It's become a pretty popular meme. Carol is this classic, you know, seemingly ethereal, perfect, uh, you know, earth mother type of character. And then you realize that there is this darker story behind her. As nutty as they may be, and as much as they detested each other, in a weird way, Joe and Carol were classically codependent. Either one of them could have de-escalated the dispute. It took the two of them to keep this dispute going on, and both of them got currency out of it. Both of them fed off of it. You know, it one log won't burn. There's a movement afoot to spring Joe from the big house. The Free Joe campaign has been a whole other side of this. You know, you have people tweeting at Donald Trump every day asking for a presidential pardon. No surprise, Trump got the message. He has 22 years for what? What did he do? He allegedly hired someone to murder an animal rights activist, but he said that he didn't do that. And he was. You think he didn't do it? Are you on his side? Uh, well, I, are, you, are you recommending a pardon? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not advocating anything. As a reporter, you're not allowed to do that. You'd be criticized by these. Would you recommend a pardon? I'm not weighing in on time. I don't change. think you would. <laughs> I don't think you would. Go ahead. You have a question? Like I'll take a look. So with all the mayhem and murder, the bizarre characters who are so out there they barely seem real, evidence of animal cruelty and all, why is it so appealing? Harvey, it, it's like being on the turnpike. You know, you go down there and there's roadkill and you go, oh, don't look. 
and but you look. Coming up, Joe's in prison. How COVID-19 sent him scrambling for safety. And where's Carol been? That's next. Levi, our only male liger here at the GW Zoo, is approximately seven years old, weighs a little over 800 pounds, and has a semi-beautiful mane. Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin have one thing in common. They've both been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Joe was in quarantine all last week in the medical wing of a Fort Worth federal prison. He was moved there earlier this month after several inmates reportedly contracted the virus. We're told Joe is virus free. Our goal is to put ourselves out of business because these animals shouldn't have to be rescued in the first place. Carol has closed her Tampa facility to visitors during the outbreak. Have a great life, Carol. When karma finally catches up with you, and I promise you it will, it's going to knock you off your feet. Back to Joe. He's appealing his conviction. He claims in legal docs he was entrapped by Alan Glover and the FBI agent. He also says he was maliciously targeted by prosecutors because he's an openly gay male who had the largest collection of tigers in America. You better get better. Yes. Dad loves you. Get better. Joe's also filed an $89 million wrongful imprisonment lawsuit against a host of people, including James Garretson, Jeff Lowe, and various federal agencies. <laughs> With all the hatred and bad behavior chronicled in Tiger King, there's one thing we can all agree on. Tigers are in trouble. A hundred years ago, there were 100,000 tigers in the wild. Today, there are fewer than 4,000. There are 5,000 captive tigers in the US, and only a tiny fraction of them are in accredited zoos. In the last two decades, more than 2,000 wild tigers were victims of poaching. Even though Tiger King focused on Joe Carroll and the gang, one thing came shining through. Not nearly enough is being done to prevent big cat abuse. Everyone agrees these animals are awesome and majestic, and they deserve our respect and protection. I'm Harvey Levin. Good night.